this. It's another experiment to see how well this microphone will do in the wind. It's a comparatively clear day, but it is very windy. Where I live, just north of Los Angeles, we've got a major problem with fires right now. Uh, we're in the middle of the fire season, and we've got what's called uh, the Woolsey Fire going on right now. Uh, the fire itself is uh, behind me. It's out that direction, so you can't see it. Uh, a few hours ago, it was all murky. You couldn't see across the street. There was so much uh, uh, smoke in the air, but uh, wind blew all the smoke away. Unfortunately, the wind is fueling the fire, so some new ones starting out, I think. But it cleared out enough for me to uh, look at a couple more scopes. More specifically, so in my last video on rifle scopes, I talked about Delta Striker, 4.5 to 30 by 56, uh, Vortex PST Gen 2, 5 to 25 by 50, and Athlon Ares ETR, 4.5 to 30 by 56. Um, all front focal planes are with precision scopes. I also am have been looking for a while now at some high magnification scopes, like F class type scopes, uh, FTR or whatever. I'm not really a target shooter, but I'm curious. Optically, they are interesting. And one of them is the Citron S5, 10 to 50 by 60. Right? Um, I've looked in the past at the first version of the scope, which did not have ED glass. This is the later version with ED glass. Okay? And another scope I have is a Delta Striker, 5 to 50 by 56. Second focal plane, very thin radical large magnification range. Um, I think in Canada somebody won uh, some F-class competition with this scope. It's another light optics works uh, uh, scope. I've been looking at it for a while. I like it a fair bit. And uh, next time I'll do a second installment of this video. Uh, I've got a Vortex Golden Eagle uh, 12, what's it 12? No, 15 to 60 by 52 uh, somewhere and I'll compare them. I when I originally looked at high power uh, target shooting scopes, I looked at the Vortex Golden Eagle against the earlier non ED glass version of the uh, Citron S5. And my basic conclusion was that despite the small objective lens, the Vortex at, at high magnification had the better optical performance, the sharper image, and all that sort of stuff, and it was lighter. But one of the things I really liked about the S5 uh, was the way it does sight focus. Let's see if you, I can see it here. Um, let's try to rotate it this way. I'll come around behind the scopes. If you can see it well, out here, um, the S5 has this dual speed side focus knob. There is the fast focus and a small turret for four times slower focus. When you're trying to focus on something on very high magnification, these uh, slower focus is dual speed focus like you like many spotting scopes have is just awesome right so my basic uh, uh, some uh, my basic recommendation was that yeah golden eagle is amazing and i really liked it for the money it was excellent but in terms of ease of use at high magnification this ability to find your focus is a big deal and i really like this five so i uh, when they announced the ed glass version i got my hands on it uh, to see if it resolves makes the image better at high magnification and it does i'll bring the golden eagle here and i'll do side by side i have briefly looked at them but uh, not as much i did look side by side between these two and the comparison is sort of uh, interesting uh, uh first of all you know kind of tops up my basic recommendation if you are looking for dedicated high magnification scope to do some target shooting and all s5 is a big deal you should take a look the ability to fine-tune focus using the slower uh, focus speed is really, really worthwhile. Because the depth of field is so shallow, and if you... The normal side focus turret is kind of difficult, but you can't do it well. If you're looking for a scope that can do a lot of different things in a pinch, uh, the Delta 5 to 50 is really an impressive thing. Um, it goes down to 5 power. Push comes to shop, I can freaking hunt at 5 power. Um, I can do a lot of things at 5 power, but it goes up to 50, and at 50 power, which is where it's set right now, if I'm looking at 50 power, if you don't point it the right way, you're not looking at too much, because it's such a narrow field, let's see, the high 
house I was looking at about a mile away, you know, you can see the nail heads, it's just remarkable. And, and looking at these two uh, side by side, certain things become immediately apparent. One is the Delta, which is a light optics works product, clearly has a warmer color temperature. Right? Um, I also have the Delta 4.5 to 30 here. It also has a slightly warmer color. This one is colder. Looking out and looking through the scope, I think the deltas are not warm. They're pretty neutral. They're very close to the way I see it. Right now it's kind of a little bit of a golden light because of all the smoke and air. And this one looks bluish to me. Because of that, if you are hungry for contrast, the side turner is not optimal for you. Right? It's quite good, but this is a target shooting scope. The lowest part goes to its 10 power. It's big and heavy. It's got a 60 millimeter objective lens. It's really designed to spend most of the time at high power and is optimized for that. It has excellent resolution, right? Basically, this scope is going after March, really, in many ways, uh, while being cheaper. It's still not cheap, it's about two grand, but it's, you know, it's cheaper than March. And um, the 60 millimeter objective lens really gives you a, an advantage at high power because the exit people is a little bit bigger. Uh, there are some other limitations and all that, but it is a nice scope. Unfortunately, the only D version they have for now, at least had at the time when I was uh, borrowing this from them, was this uh, particular one has one eight MOA clicks and it has a target dot radical, once again, for target shooters, right? And it worked well. I've had this guy for a while, I've checked tracking and everything, everything uh, tracks perfectly. And really, it's just you've got your tiny little dot, you put it on the target, you, know, you pull your trigger. Nothing. Um, the click feel is very good. Saiton always had good turrets, and these are among the better ones. And these are also Lachlan turrets that they pop up and they push down to lock and pop up to unlock. The Delta, this Delta I have. Uh, has standard non-locking turrets, but the feel is very good. And this one is in milliradian, which I prefer. I'm a mill guy, this is 0.1 milliradian mix. This is one thing where I'm kind of mixed. A lot of target uh, shooting scopes that go to very high magnification have 0.05 milliradian clicks. This one has 0.1. Um, I'm used to 0.1, it works well for me, but I can see how somebody would like 0.05. Also, Delta also just released, or is about to release, a version of this scope that has locking turrets. So I'm going to get that and see uh, how well that works. I've seen some locking turrets not executed very well, so I'm very curious. Uh, but um, the Delta, with its very broad magnification range, is clearly a target shooting scope that can do other things. Right? If you are a tactical guy who can get along with second focal plane scopes. This is a really interesting option for you. The scope is fairly compact, just to give you an idea of comparative sizes. Here's what they look like, right? So 4.5 to 30 Ares, 5 to 25 PST, 4.5 to 30 Delta Striker HD front focal plane, 5 to 50 by 56 Delta Striker second focal plane, 10 to 50 by 60. Citron S5. Okay. I mean, Citron is clearly the larger scope, but the 5 to 50 Delta, considering how broad the magnification ranges and all, is really not that huge. So I'm kind of depressed, right? It's an interesting design. I'm generally not a hog for very high magnification ratios, but they have their place. When I first heard about the scope, I was a little bit mixed because, you know, um, if it's a purpose-built uh, target shooting scope, I mean, why do you need the low power? But, you know, long-range hunters might, might like this. A uh, bunch of different applications it really opens up the range of applications. And the reticles available in the 5 to 50 striker are grid-type reticles, not a tree reticle, just a mill scale. Well, I think they have a more version. This one is uh, a mill radian. Yeah, it's nice and thin, very fine point, but push comes to shove, I can do range estimation, I can do all sorts of funky things with it if I am so inclined, taking a take out second focal plane 
and all that. But it's really, it's really looking at them side by side is really interesting and more than a little bit tricky. This whole, uh, this whole high magnification thing. I'm gonna look out for the valley. power rifle scope and tripod like this is uh, a little bit tricky so I need to let it settle down and the wind is moving it a little bit but I'm looking at stuff about 15 miles out like if you are doing general purpose target shooting and all that and you just want one scope to do it all the 5 to 50 striker is a good candidate for that I mean with something like this I don't need a spotting scope even with the 30 power I don't need a spotting scope with the 50 power and a functional, usable 50 power scope, which uh, both of these are, I really don't need a spotter, right? But anyhow, so this is sort of a, um, the high power stuff is an ongoing test. Uh, I will update you as I uh, go along. Uh, thank you for watching once again. Go to my website, uh, darklordofoptics.com, click on some links, help me keep this going. Thank you for your time.